Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today comes from a YouTube commenter who asks, I want to count the number of duplicates in a particular column in a data frame. Okay, so let us talk about duplicate data, okay? So uh, let's just start by importing pandas as pd. And then uh, as our example data set, I'm actually going to pull some code from a previous video. So I'm going to go to the GitHub repository for this video series, and there's a link in the description below. And here is the repository. You can uh, scroll on down and click on under code this link to the IPython slash Jupyter notebook. And you'll be taken to this uh, Jupyter notebook. And uh, if you want to see the commented code for a particular video, you just click on it in the table of contents. And I want a piece of code from video two. So uh, here I am in video two and uh, links to documentation and whatnot. And I am going to uh, copy and paste this line of code or this cell, cell number four, and copy it and paste it to the notebook, okay? So I'm going to run that in a second, but I do want to add one thing. I'm going to say index call equals user underscore ID, okay? So having run that, uh, let's take a look at this data set. And this is a data set of movie reviewers, okay? And uh, let's take a look at the shape. Uh, users.shape, and 943 rows, four columns, okay? So let's say that we want to identify duplicate zip codes, okay? The method we're going to use, it's a series method, and you just say users.zipcode.duplicated, okay? And when we run that, we get back a series of trues and falses, okay? And uh, the logic here is that it returns a true, like in line 29, returns a true if there was an entry previous to it, meaning above it, that was identical. In other words, whatever zip code that user 29 has was also the same zip code uh, that was somewhere above here, okay? We can't see which one, it doesn't tell us that, but we know that it is a duplicate to something that was previous to it, okay? Now, because this is a series of Booleans, we can uh, add them up to count the number of duplicates like the commenter asked for, and I can just say dot sum, and what'll happen is that uh, the trues get converted to ones, the falses get converted to zeros, and it adds it up and says that there are 148 duplicate zip codes, okay? Now, let's expand this a little bit. Uh, let's look at uh, duplication in the data frame as a whole instead of just a series. So, uh, for example, I can just use the data frame method duplicated, users.duplicated, okay? And what we'll see here is that it will output a true if a, an entire row is identical to a previous row, again, meaning one above it, okay? And um, just like before, we can sum that. And there are seven rows in which um, the values in that row are also the same values as a previous row in the data frame. So now you might be wondering, well, what are those rows? What do they look like? So if we want to see them, we can uh, use the loc method and we pass to loc. What rows do I want to see? We can pass a series of Booleans and it will show any row in which true is present in that series, okay? So if we say users.duplicated and then I want to see all columns, that will allow us to see the seven rows that were identified by duplicated. Now, 
Let's be very clear about the logic, and to clarify it, I want to show you the default argument for a parameter called keep. So I'm going to say keep equals first as a string. Okay. So that was the default, nothing changed. But the logic for first is as follows. Mark duplicates as true except for the first occurrence. Okay? So the first occurrence gets kept, and all others in the data frame get identified as duplicates. Now, you can change the logic and say, I actually want to keep the last. Okay? And now we are seeing the seven rows that are counted as duplicates, keeping the later one, the lower down one in the data frame, which is why these have much lower numbers. Okay? There's a third option you can use for duplicated, and it's keep equals false. And this is not a string. This is the Boolean false. And keep equals false means mark all duplicates as true, and thus they will show up when we use the loc method. So as we can see, this row, 17 male student 60402, is also found down here. Okay. Now, uh, let's pretend that we want to drop the duplicates from the data frame. Now, in this case, we don't actually believe that like this user is the same as this user because they have unique user IDs, but we're going to pretend that we're going to that we think they're duplicates and we should drop them from the data frame, okay? So, how do we do that? We're going to use a method called drop duplicates. So, users.drop duplicates and the default is keep equals first. Um, but I'll go ahead and write it, and I'll say dot shape. And if you remember, it started out as 943. Now it's 936, so it lost those seven rows. Okay. Um, this, by the way, does not occur in place by default. You can change it to in place equals true if you like. Um, but we see that it drops the seven rows with keep equals first. Uh, we can change this to keep equals last. And it also drops seven rows. It just drops a different seven rows. It keeps the last version of the duplicate. And of course, we can also say keep equals false, in which case it will drop both versions. And now it's down to 929, meaning it dropped 14 rows. Okay. So as always, we're going to end with a bonus. And the bonus is as follows. What if you only wanted to consider certain columns when identifying duplicates? Okay? You don't want to consider all columns, just certain columns. So for example, let's pretend that we believe age plus zip code should be a unique identifier in this data set. Okay? Age plus zip code. So what we will do is we'll say users.duplicated. And uh, we'll say subset equals, and we pass it a list of strings. We say age and uh, zip code. Okay. And let's go ahead and just say dot sum. Okay. And uh, what this means is that if we tell duplicated to only consider age and zip code as the relevant columns, there are 16 duplicates in the data frame. Okay. Similarly, you can use drop underscore duplicates with this subset um, parameter. And let's just take the shape. And uh, that is the data frame with those 16 rows that we just identified uh, with those rows dropped. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, Please click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'd love to hear you from you in the comment section below if you have a comment or a question or a tip for others, and we can all help each other to learn. But that's it. So uh, I hope to see you again soon.